Hey guys, it's Aaron, and today we're going to take a look at the extension Architectures. That's right, Architectures, Architectural Textures, Architectures. It's a great extension that allows you to create high res, seamless textures inside of SketchUp. There is a free version and there's a pro version. The free version will let you use the stock textures. Pro version lets you actually customize and work with bump maps and import export, render ready textures. There's a lot to it. Uh, my review here will probably scratch the surface, but it's worth checking out if you've ever had a need for high resolution textures and don't wanna go through the grunt work of taking photos and editing to make them seamless and that sort of thing, check this out. All right, so first thing we got here is, this is Extension Warehouse, this is the listing page. Um, so this gives a little bit of information about it. You can come up here. There is a link to the website too, architectures.org. Very cool, uh, simple uh, layout, way to use. Uh, it does list it as free because like I said, you can use it as free, but there's a subscription if you wanna get the full benefit of the software. I'm gonna go ahead and close that. When you install Architectures, the UI is just a simple button. So it's right here, or you can also get to it through the extensions uh, menu. But if you, once you pull it up, let's pull this up right here. Here's what it gives you. So it starts with stock textures, right? So here's a bunch of textures that it has in there. And these are all fairly high quality. They're, I mean, they're great looking textures to put in a SketchUp right off the bat. Um, this is just some of the, the textures. This isn't everything. This is a handful of them. You can see, click more to make this a bigger list. But there's also this ability to filter at the top. So if I come up here, I can go to category and I can say, do I wanna look at brick versus carpet versus ceramic versus stone versus metal versus, oh, so many things, so many options to choose from. And if you don't necessarily like material, you can also come here and choose pattern. This is cool too, because you can say, you know, is this a stacked, stretched herringbone? I'm always a sucker for a nice herringbone pattern. Let's take a look at herringbone real quick. So you can see what that does is it lets you go through and filter by the just massive amount of textures. Seeing there's even more of these. Uh, and these, all the ones are here are gonna have this herringbone layout. Let's go ahead and grab one of these and we just dive a little deeper into how this works. I'm gonna grab this granite herringbone. That is cool looking. So you can see already, this is a, a good looking texture that I could actually drop into my model and I would be pretty happy with how this looks. But if I have a pro, I can, I can actually come in here and I can click edit, which is gonna let me actually dive in and manipulate this texture. This is cool. Um, so there's a lot of, I, you know, with these videos, I can only cover so much. Um, I do recommend, like I said, if any of this looks intriguing to you, dive in, go deeper than what I can do here. Uh, it is an awesome extension. So here we're gonna look at some things. Uh, so we have some options across the top, manipulating the texture, manipulating the bump map, ma manipulating how it would look for hats. We're gonna, we're gonna stick with a standard texture right here. And we have the, the option for changing the pattern type. I'm here for herringbone, so I'm not gonna change that. But you can see, I could take these same textures, these same materials and apply them to different layouts. Um, I have the ability to set the number of rows and columns. This is huge. If you've ever manually made a seamless texture, you know that uh, <laughs> the eventually, sooner or later, this is gonna repeat, right? So this, this little dark, see this brick right here, darker here, it actually is also up here. Um, that's going to repeat over and over. And I'm gonna see, you can even see on this page, you can see that little dark one, dark one, darker one, darker one. So you will see re re repetition, of course. How big you make this, of course, is gonna cut down on the amount of repetition. So if you have a very small space and you don't wanna see repetition, you could actually output a larger image by increasing the rows or columns. Obviously, the bigger you make this, the bigger the image, then the bigger the file gets. Uh, so you wanna be conscious of that. You don't wanna put in a 20 by 20 or something like that. It's gonna be enormous, but you can manipulate that. If you have a very small space or you don't mind repetition, you could actually drop this down to a smaller piece, which would give you a smaller chunk that will repeat more often, but it'll be more compact and take up less space in your actual model. All right, let's move forward. Uh, down here, I do have my material. This is my material for the main piece. So this is the actual, in this case, these bricks. So you can see I have some, some material there I can choose. Um, some, I say some, there's a handful of materials and these are all high quality, high res images. So really cool there. Um, if we wanted to, let's say I wanted to go to pink granite rather than 
my regular granite. There we go. Um, then I can actually set the size that this represents. So, so th that's that's so we'll we'll see. Watch this. So if I drop this down, say ten inches, then my bricks are now ten inch bricks as opposed to fifteen inch bricks. So this is the actual material size that I'm setting. And then I have the ability to come in here and pull up sliders, and I can actually this is and this is the coolest part. Or well, it's all the coolest part. I like this extension if you guys haven't picked up on it, but I can actually change everything about this. So it's it gets a little weird in my head because I know I'm looking at an image, but I'm changing everything about the image like I'm actually changing something in real life. Very cool. Um, I can also come down here, play with my tint. So if I want to make it a specific, I want to make it more orangey than it is red, or I want to go crazy and make it blue, um, I can make those kinds of changes also. I did not like that I did that. I'll just say, let's put this back to a bricky color. Um, that's bold, that got bold. So then here's this, and this is this is more fun stuff, my edges. So I can say I wanna make really fine edges. And you see, I get real clean mortar lines right there as opposed to rough. And then if I go to rough, I can say, okay, and how big do I wanna make them? I can make them even bigger and even rougher. I can change the profile width and I can actually choose to only do certain sides. It's, this, is where, this is where I cr can come in and say that I can create a texture that no one has ever seen before, make it look totally original, and somebody else can grab the same setup and end up with a different texture because this allows me to just totally make it different. Same thing here, same with the material up there. I can come in with my concrete and say, okay, I don't wanna use, because I'm using these dark bricks, I wanna use a lighter mortar make that stand out more. Um, I can tint that, I can change the size. Um, ooh, I can recess or unrecess, so make it the joints up flush, or see if I put this recess joints on, see I get a little bit of a shadow in there showing this drop down. Once I've gone through and made everything I like in here, this is perfect, it's just what I want, I can choose to import. And what that'll do is that'll drop that right into my paint bucket. So when I come in here and apply, I'm applying that exact material. And there you can see how that material looks. I, maybe I made it a little too rough. It looks a little, little, little too exaggerated, but man, that's gonna look cool, like panned out like this. I can tell that I got like maybe handmade bricks and uh, maybe I did the mortaring myself instead of hiring a professional, I don't know. But the idea is with architectures, you can get these high res, one of a kind images just by manipulating a couple sliders and changing a couple of presets quick and super, super easy. And honestly, kind of fun. <laughs> I know you guys can catch it when I enjoy playing with something, but this is a fun one because uh, we get that question all the time. You know, the, the stock textures inside of SketchUp are really intended to get you started. It's for a beginner just to throw something on there. We always encourage people to go out and take pictures of the actual material you want to use. That is a great way to do it. Not always reasonable, not always something you can do. Architectures, gets you to that same point where you still have high res images and uh, repeating images, stacking or stretching imagery. And um, for, I can't remember, I believe it's $5.99 per month. You can do that without ever like leaving your seat. You can generate those. So check out Architectures. It's on the 3D Warehouse or architectures.org. And uh, let me know what you think. If it's an extension you've used before, let me know how it is using it in real practice. If you like this video, go ahead and click like down below. And if you haven't already, please do subscribe. We create several videos each and every week and to be notified of all of them if you subscribe. Most importantly though, please do leave us a comment. Do you like this extension? Is there another one you think I should take a look at? We like making these videos. We like it even more when they're showing something you wanna see. Thank you.